that um, they might have first done this one before they can get the final one. So I follow on that one. The final one is 10% of your grade, and it is mandatory. And then it is, you've got to do this one before you do that one. Okay? Colors. You're doing twisted pair cables, four pairs in there, eight wires. Um, on five out of the six M's, and we're going to use the 568B as our normal standard starting on the wiring. Okay? There is 568A also, which we'll use for one. So on five out of six M's, you're going to do with the B. The following colors. White orange, orange, white green, blue, white blue, green, white brown, brown. Okay? And that's working from left to right. Okay? Five out of six M's, that's what we're going to do. Now, one of those five M's, we're going to put the plug on upside down. Four of them are going to be identical. Okay? One M, we're going to do that we're going to have. On one end of one, on the crossover cable, we're going to do 568A on the other end of it. The only difference between the A and the B is we're switching the orange and green pairs. Okay? So it's going to be white, green, green, white, orange, blue, white, blue, orange, white, brown, brown. Okay? So all thing you've done is switch the orange and the green pairs. And straight through cable, you're going to do B on both ends. Okay? And originally that's what they used with B. Now you can do, when you're doing them out there, you all can do either A or B in these cases. Okay? The original standard actually was for B on it, so that's where I'm staying with the B of having y'all do. So if you pick up a cable and it's got A's on both ends, it's a straight through cable, it'll still work fine. It's just they used A instead of B. Okay. You don't want to change on them for the straight through one because you want them to be matching the pair of the wire to be staying together and the twist going along. That's the reason or making sure you get them straight on there. Crossover cable. That's going to have a B and an A. That's the one where you're connecting two pieces of life equipment together. If you want to connect two PCs together, you choose the crossover cable. The rollover cable is a Cisco proprietary cable just for their purposes, and that's to plug into the console port like we've done in here, and to go in and then manage that router or the switch, that roll over there. On it, we're going to do B on both ends, except this plug's upside down. It's the same as a straight through, except for on one end, you're going to put the plug on upside down. Everybody follow them up? Now, on all of them except for this one spot here, you're going to be putting them flat side up to the plug. Okay? Questions on that? So that's what we're going to be doing now. I'm going to show you how to do it.
do you want to show you bad when on that all right first thing is pull the cable out of distance don't cut it off too close to the box so it doesn't fall back in the box and let's have to try to get the find the end of the wire again to pull it out it happens i know that so let's try to keep it down minimally because the box is going to gradually wear out on us as we can close on that and it's harder and harder trying to find the end of it when you go to cut the cable use the electronic scissors to do that <coughs> didn't bring my other tools in here so i don't know if there are wire cutters in here that would work perfectly fine for doing the job you know, something that's going to cut on this don't use this other pair of scissors i'm going to show you in a minute what to do with them don't use them to cut the hole with the cable or we'll mess them up cut yourself off somewhere two to three feet or whatever or if you've got a use at home for a certain length straight through cable, you go ahead and make yourself one, okay? Everybody follow on that? Box of cable, we've got a thousand feet here. Usually those run somewhere about eighty to a hundred dollars for a thousand feet. I'm not sure current price, but we're now going through those or depot, home depot recently, looking at pricing on cable currently. I paid nine bucks for hundred feet. Hmm. I paid nine bucks for hundred feet. Which would be ninety for a thousand feet. So that's right in the range for us to say. It varies some depending on how the price of oil does, because remember there's a lot of plastic on it, and how the price of copper does. And I haven't looked at the price of copper recently. The oil's been down some, so if you bought it by a thousand feet, it probably it's probably then in terms of the eighties or seventies. It's a little cheaper when you buy a bigger bulk. Um, and you can get them to sell it to you by the way on it. I buy it by the box truck. Um, about a thousand feet at a time, and then I sell it off to people as I make stuff that for a month that bought it and make my money back from it. So there I've now got my little wire. Don't make it too short because you're always have to replace the plug a few times, and you don't want to get the wire down too short on it. Okay. So I say give yourself two or three feet is usually about about that long or a little longer, whatever you feel comfortable. Okay. But don't cut yourself off just a short little piece here to start with going. I'm going to get it all right in the first place because you'll end up then us trying to test the cable that's about that long and trying to test it on there. Okay. We're going to take a pair of strippers, which is just this little thing here. What it does is it will cut a little notch into the outer sheet. Okay, it's not going to cut through it, it's just going to notch it. And if you've ever cut glass, we're going to be working just like we're working glass. If you cut glass, you don't literally cut the glass. You just notch a line on the glass and you break it on the line. Okay? Likewise here. If we don't want to cut through, because if we cut through, we're going to cut the wires inside in turn at least the insulation on them and short them out and then we've got a messed up wire. So we just want to notch the outside of this to be able to break it off. Okay. Strippers tend to run about $15 to $20 for that little stripper here. Now it's got three little blades on it. One is a spare blade. One is raised up slightly to work for on here, but it's got two blades actually there. So if you were working on a coax cable, it's actually the correct width on it of how much of the spare of the blank wire you have exposed for it and that you would have it set for the two different levels of the sheets on the coax wire. So that's the reason for the extra weights. It is razor blades. Okay? So don't run your finger in there to run across it. Um, it will cut you. Okay? I can assure you that one because I've had some students decided to test me on that. Um, and they drew blood. So there is a little weight sticking up there and occasionally we have to bang it back up to get it back raised a little bit because it'll work itself down all the time. But if this one stuck up pointy, let's see how this one works. This one looks like it's stuck up pointy. <coughs> so it should work fine. So I'm just going to put it on here somewhere an inch or so back, an inch or two back. 
I'm not going to squeeze it shut. They're self-closing on it. I'm just going to close on to it and just let it sit there and spin it around three or four times. And then take it off. And then I should see a little notch on there. And if I bend on it, it should break on it. Which is doing nicely for me, right? As y'all can see that part. Pull that off. Try to at least get the sheet ones into the trash can. The other little wires you probably aren't going to get in trash cans very well, but at least just get the piece of plastic into it that you can fill up afterwards and throw in the trash can. There is a pull string in here that if you want to get it out of your way, you can, but you can just cut it off if you want. So I can take the other scissors, trim that little string off there. And then I'm going to take the four pairs of wires. I'm going to want them to match like I've got up there, essentially. I'm going to get angry to get it to there, but to start with, I'm going to go ahead and get it where the orange pair is on the left and brown pair is on the right. You don't have to if you don't want to. If you want to, however you want to work to get them there, you can. But that's what I do. And then I'll green and the blue, notice it's one inside the other, so you really can't mind it them up. So I'm going to start untwisting all the pairs. And I'll go ahead and straighten them out a little bit. And what order you do them in, that's completely your option. I go ahead and line them in place. This wire is good on having the color on the whites, but some other wire sometimes you won't see the color have come out very well on the net. You're real careful to be straight. But they've colored the white wire well on here. So just be aware if you go to use other cables, sometimes it doesn't do quite as well. Then I'll get them all taken apart, lined up like I want them to be. Wait a minute, that's not right. Should be a white solid, white solid, white solid, white solid through the whole thing. You notice, although it's not always the same. Pair together on it, but it is a white solid, white solid all the way down. Okay. So uh, I end up with this peacock looking thing here. Very well. I've got the colors in the order I want them. Grab hold of it right here where it comes out of the sheet. Not way on up, not back here. Right there where it comes out and get them held in place. Got to hold there, grab it, and hold it. Now we're going to hold on to there until we slide the plug onto it. So, Therefore, this hand is going to be doing for the next few minutes of just holding this, just like this. Okay? Now, take the rest of this and work them together and then pull them hard across your finger. If you do it right, it should feel like you're putting a blister on your finger. And try not to get them to jump. And if you pull hard, it's going to, and then sometimes you got to wiggle them back and forth a little bit, it's going to turn into a ribbon cable. So that I will get a nice little ribbon there. Everybody see? And all I did was just pull hard across it. Okay? And wiggle a little bit back and forth and did it too. And they straighten out and make a nice little flat ribbon cable for me in the process. That impressed me when I learned how to do this. Because when I told what I was going to take those eight little wires and you know, get to that plug, I'm going, this is going to take some work. But that right there is going to take care of your problems right there. Okay? Take a plug, 
they run about 25 cents a piece. going to be to take that outer sheet and push it into this plug, it will only go up to where it narrows right here, the outer sheet. Okay? We want to get it part way in there, so you're going to plan on it going part way. The little wires, we want to go all the way to the end. Okay? So now I'm going to measure it over here. I know about where it is under my finger. Okay? Lay it over there. And then one of the colors, the white, that usually you'll see a color starting or ending about where it lines up to. And so you'll now know which one it is you want to cut it on. Okay? Everybody follow on that? Because you don't have any way otherwise. Remember, this game is stuck. So I'll line it up there. Because you can feel under your thumb, you know about how far it goes underneath there. And so you can sort of line up, and then you take a judgment. Then I'm going to take this expensive pair of scissors. They're Dollar Tree scissors. Okay? But the blades are nicely aligned. And we want to cut these little wires. And we want well aligned blades that are sharp to cut the little wires, or else it just bend the wires and that's not going to work. So every six months or so, I go to Dollar Tree and buy a new pair of scissors when this pair wears out and breaks. Go buy another cheap pair of scissors. When you buy more expensive ones, but the weights don't always seem to stay aligned, etc. Those electronic scissors cost a whole bunch more, but the weights are not aligned, etc. on it and won't work on that little tiny wire. Which is the reason I don't want you using these on the thick wire because we don't want to mess up these blades. Although you can tell I spent big money on them. And I don't charge the school for that. I just go and spend my own whole big dollar dollar tree. Cut it off. We've got a nice little straight cut, and you want to make it a straight cut across there. A square one. Don't make it diagonal. Take our plug, and there's one side's got a tab, and one side doesn't have a tab. The side without the tab is what I'm calling flat side up. Every follow that? with the tab is tab side up. Five out of six times I told you you're going to put them on flat side up. Okay? That's with the orange on the left. So then I'll just start sliding it in until it runs out of space on my finger. I'm going to go and keep on pushing all the way to the end. Push on up till you get it all the way up there. Stop. And then at that point, 
we've got a plug put on here. That plug is not coming off at this point. No matter how hard we try, it's not going to go anywhere. If you made it wrong at this point, the only thing that you can do now is take the scissors and cut it off and start all over again. Everybody follow on that? That will happen to you. You'll have a wire jump occasionally in there or something else, and then you'll have to remake plugs occasionally. Okay? So if you got to remake one, don't worry about that. Now, let me run through the other end of it so that I can show you the tester that I have both ends. Exposed, don't worry about that. Okay? As y'all are learning. 
when you do them out there, you really want to keep them down so it's not anything So now I'll put this one in again. Let's squeeze it. Warning on the crimpers, there is a razor blade on it too. Because you can actually do all of this stuff with just the crimper itself. So there is a couple of razor blades right in there where you can do your cutting of what we're doing with the strippers and with the scissors that you can actually just cut off through there. Okay, it doesn't work as well for me trying to use the crimper as an all in one tool like use the crimper as a crimper. But that's all there. But be aware those are blades right there so don't reach in there playing around you ain't got razor blades there right so we're trusting y'all are all grown up kids that know how to play safe with razor blades now Now, we're going to take the cable. There's three plugs across the top there where you're going to plug into. The side piece slides off so that you can run along testing from one location to another location. Go down the hall, with the side piece plug in, plug the other in here, et cetera. Okay. The white one is the one we're going to use, which is going to be on the top on two of them. That's going to be your RJ45 plug, which is what we just put on. Small ones, the RJ11 for telephone wire. It's also on the bottom of the removable piece on it. Okay. So, you can use it for a variety of things. Now, so we're going to plug it in, and then we're going to turn it on. Since y'all all know Chinese as a second language, y'all have no problem with these meters. They're in Chinese. Um, we bought cheap meters. They've always been English before. We a lot of cheap meters. This time, for some reason, when they shipped them to us, they came in in Chinese. Okay. On off switches right here, it's got two settings for on. One is slow, one is fast. So if I push the switch over, it starts running down through everything. I push it on one position further, it slows down. So there's a fast and a slow position. So it's in Chinese, and you can tell that it's fast and slow. Unless y'all know Chinese. Okay? I've been to China, but I don't know Chinese. And I haven't slept in a Holiday Inn Express recently, so that doesn't make me a hard game anyway. Um, so, you're going to turn it on and then you're going to watch. On the straight through cable, which is what I just made, our lights should line up straight across. So it should be 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8. We did exactly the same plug on both ends, right? No problem on that. So, unless y'all saw it flash something different as it went down, and I wasn't paying attention. Looks like your instructor does know how to make a straight through cable. Okay? Crossover cable. That one, you're switching the orange and the green pairs, remember? So what you're going to have happen on this one, on the crossover is, is it's going to be one and three, two and six, three and one, Four and four, five and five, six and two, seven and seven, eight and eight is going to be your color combinations. So everybody follow on that? Definitely do that one in slow your first time. Okay? Because at fast you'll never know if it's what the right colors or not. You'll just see a Christmas tree effect. Okay, but that's the colors. Because notice, this white orange is one, 
the third position. So it would be one and three. Two and six. The gear blue blue says four matches four. Rollover cable. The last ones of these meters that we got, for some reason they've done something in the chip in them, and they will not work with a rollover cable. Okay, so when you plug your roller cable in, if you made it correctly, nothing will happen. No lights will come on. If you made it incorrectly, you'll get lights coming on. But they've got somehow coded into their little tiny chip, and there's a little tiny chip inside this thing, that it doesn't know what to do with a roller cable. Like every other combination, apparently, you can do with a cable, it can work with. But it doesn't know what in the world to do with that one. If it did work right, which I've got a meter in my car that is still a good one, these do wear out after a time. They only, these meters only cost $5 a piece for micro Or you can go buy $40, $50 meters from computer stores. <coughs> and I can uh, get more intricate, but this does everything we need. And it does wear out after a certain amount of time, but I've got one that I probably had seven or eight years in my car. It displays correctly on it, and what it does is it starts from the top on one side, it starts from the bottom on the other side, and the lights just go in reverse. That's one, eight, two, seven, three, six, etc. Does everybody follow on that? Because you just switch them. For our purposes on here, when you plug it in, if you get blanks, you're probably okay. I'm going to visually check it. Okay? Because I can hold them up and look at them and tell are these things correct or not. If it doesn't work right, that's what you're going to have to do also. Remember the rule I said. White solid, white solid, white solid, white solid. One of these pins have been wrong. And you're going, I don't know what gen it is is messed up. You're going to hold it up, look at it, and see. Are they white solid, white solid, white solid? You don't care what whites are on there at this point. Because if you've done switch one wire at a place, you're going to end up with either two solids beside each other or two whites beside each other. And that's going to stand out at you and you'll know this is the one I got to cut off and replace. Without having to worry about exactly which one it is exactly. The fact that it's two whites or two solids, you know it's wrong. Questions on that? Do I see how to do it now? No. Don't have to play with it as you do. We've only got so many tools in here. There is two strippers. I think I've got a couple more in there. I've got two current first out so far. And uh, when you're sitting there separating them out, obviously, you don't need any tools if you're working on that. So y'all can all be working. So come up, cut yourself off some wires. You're going to make three. You can cut all three off if you want, or it's one. 